Sir Charles. I hope you guys know about that. Now you want to come back. But do you really deserve mm, to be in my world? Welcome to Talk That Talk with Diva Speaks Relationships. My name is Angela Potarell. For those of you that don't know, I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out tonight's show. I do not take your attendance for granted, so thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping by. We have a letter, guys. Okay. We got a letter tonight. What happened to the better? Ooh, Jesus. It's just something about remembering the vows that you took when all hell is broke loose. But you're the only one that's remembering that you took vows. Or for those of you who haven't taken vows, you made the commitment. And now things are not as they should, but you're the only one calling into remembrance the commitment that the two of you made to one another, you know. Sir Charles will get you together, okay? But let me go ahead and turn him down and let's get into it. Oh, I love me some Sir Charles. But if you're not from the South, okay, if you don't know anything about the Mississippi Delta or even North Dallas, because I'm from Dallas, Texas. That you wouldn't know about this, Sir Charles. Don't even play with me. Don't play with my feelings. So, guys, we have a letter. We have a letter. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Because I can definitely, I can definitely relate. And I have no shame about telling you. I can definitely relate. I've been there before. I have been there before. I have visited that location. I know exactly where that GPS, I can pinpoint the GPS of where the letter writer is that I'm about to share with you right now. Again, my name is Angela Potareal and welcome to the show. Well, the TikTok show, okay? Not the... <laughs> Not the actual talk show. Oh, my God. So, let me get these glasses on. I actually found them today. All right, guys. Okay, here we go. 
Let's turn Zaddy down. I love me some Sir Charles. If you don't know anything about Sir Charles, I don't know what you're doing with your Saturday nights and your brown liquor or your glass of wine or whatever the hell that you sip on to get yourself together. Sir Charles is about that. So, all right, guys. So, we have a letter from a woman who was going through some serious things. And I decided, because Thursday is Thanksgiving, and that's typically when I come on, right, on a Thursday night. But I will be with my family, as probably all of you guys will be, too. And ain't nobody got time for no TikTok Live on Thursday. So I said, well, let's just, let's just do what we do tonight. Can we do it tonight? Okay. So here's what she has to say. She says, I've been with my husband for 10 years. He cheated twice. He's shown me time and time again that his words will never turn into actions. So why am I here? I miss companionship. I miss love. Ooh, I miss love. We have kids together. I'm simply just lonely. I wish I understand what he felt when he cheated on me both times. But I could never give him this kind of pain. And I've even been considering finding someone just for attention because I'm dying over here. But I won't and I wouldn't. I'm just tired of hurting all the time. I'm so lonely. I decided to stay and work it out after his cheating. But I miss being in love and being loved. That spoke to me unfortunately okay that's that's that spoke to me this sister says i am so lonely i decided to stay and work it out after his cheating but i miss being in love and being loved hmm It just feels dry without the, the music, okay? It feels very dry. So if you're just not tuning in, I got a letter from a woman who decided to stick around after her man has done her wrong twice. Twice. And I just want to say to this, to this beautiful soul, I want to applaud you for your transparency. I want to applaud you for being woman enough to own up to what you're really feeling and what you're facing. Because the truth of the matter is, my good sister, there are a lot of people that have probably walked in your shoes but have not been able to confess what they were really feeling and the reason that they stayed behind after someone has stepped outside of the relationship. I want to say bravo to you for your level of transparency because maybe during the course of me reading your letter and sharing my thoughts on it, that will allow someone else in a similar situation or a situation just like yours to come to terms with the fact that they stayed in a marriage and now they have sacrificed being loved. You know... I get it. I get it. When you take vows, there, there are, there's a small population of us who really take to heart the vows that we take, that we state in front of the altar, that we, you know, when we get into these covenants and we understand the, the sacredness of the covenant and we are just people just by nature who are commitment keepers, you know, it's a very small population of us. We are commitment keepers. And it takes a lot for us to throw in that towel and say enough is enough. You know, because we took those vows and the better and the worse. And we understand that. And sometimes there may be times that the worst happens before it gets better. But I don't think at no time should the worst include infidelity. Let's be very clear about that. I think that what this man has done to you, he's not only broken the vows, he's broken your heart. He has. He's broken your heart and he has broken your spirit. 
And then he has the unmitigated gall to leave you unattended, to sit there and fester in your own emotions and to not even take a, look, a second look back at his wife and look at the damage that he's caused by stepping out. And you know, you say in the letter that he's shown me time and time again that his words will never turn into action. Again, I go back to being sometimes unfortunate enough to be one of those true commitment keepers. I feel that you and I have a similar spirit. You're a commitment keeper. You're a covenant keeper. Your covenant is not something that you want to abandon. But let me tell you something, my good sister. I understand wanting to stay and trying to work it out and want to keep the family together. You say you got kids, but he is not acting as he should. He is not treating you as you should be treated. And this is definitely not a reflection of God's love for you. This is definitely not the best that God has for you. The way he's acting right now is just sad. And you're sad, not sad as in like pathetic. I mean, sad as an emotion from woman to woman. Let me tell you, girl, I've been, I've been there. I've been in a relationship before where a man has checked out, disconnected, unplugged from the relationship and left. Okay. And left. Oh, you can take that any way you want and left, <laughs> left left not only the relationship, left emotionally, left mentally, left physically, left, didn't give a, a hot ass minute or worth of a second about how his actions impacted me. So when I say this letter spoke to me, it really spoke to me. But let me tell you something, honey. It's one thing that I do know, whether you are a Christian, no matter what kind of faith you are, whether you're spiritual, we can say from a biblical standpoint that God is not to be mocked for whatever a man soweth. This he shall also reap. We can look at it like that. Or we can say karma has a way of visiting everyone, good and or bad. Karma needs no GPS. Karma knows where to find you and pay you back for your dirty deeds. And your husband is no exception to that. But what I want you to do is give yourself a little grace. You've given him a lot of grace for his multiple cheating. And let me tell you something. You say he's cheated twice. Baby girl, he's cheated more than twice. You just knew about two times. Okay? Let's be very, let's be very, you know, let's, let's come to terms with it. You just know about two times. Any man that checks out like that, Instead of humbling himself, instead of saying, you know what, it was fun while it lasted, I shouldn't have done it, but you know what, I'm breaking up my family, I'm breaking my wife's heart, I've broken my vows, let me will this thing back in and do right by my wife. No, what he's done, he's really checked out on you. So you have a choice to make. Because I, I, I feel that if you don't make a decision today to stand up for yourself and, de and decide what you're going to do for yourself so that you can feel better. The holidays are coming and you're just going to keep spiraling and spiraling and spiraling into a state of depression behind a man that don't give a damn about you right now. I don't know what has crawled up his ass and got him treating you like this and leaving you to just exist. The, one of the worst things in the world is to be in a marriage where you're miserable, to be in a relationship where you're miserable, to be lonely when you are supposed to be sharing your life with someone. But the only thing you're sharing is bills. The only thing you're sharing is bills because this person has sampled the goods of another and now their affections is probably being placed elsewhere versus where it should be, which is on you. You will have to start taking care of yourself emotionally. I, I hate to be the one to say this. I really do. But I have always heard that when somebody is doing you wrong, 
one of the things that allows them to stay and keep straying is watching because I've been there before. I'm telling you I have is them watching you be sad and depressed and not taking care of yourself. No one wants to see that, especially a person that knows that they are the reason that you're in this state. But it's, it's crazy how the mind works because now you're looking more and more unattractive to them because you're not taking care of yourself. No matter what level you think you are just maintaining, you're not. You're not taking care of yourself. Your appearance is probably slacking because you just don't have the energy. You don't have the interest to do anything but mourn what your marriage or your relationship used to be. Baby, I get that. Again, I applaud your level of transparency. But the question is, what good is it doing you staying behind when he's checked out? You're literally just living under the same roof. You need to make a, uh, you need to make a plan. You need to sit down and decide, what do I want for myself? Whether that's with him or without him. And if you are determined to fight for your marriage you need to understand that this may be a process i'm not saying that god won't do it and i'm not saying that god can't do it because matthew 19 26 tells us that through christ jesus all things are possible to those that believe in him but the reality is my sister god doesn't force his will upon any of us that would include your husband so if this man has chosen to check out of your marriage and your relationship at some point i need you to be able to be happy and go on with your life if he never checks back in if he's never repentant if he never asks for forgiveness if he never comes to terms with how badly he's hurt you your life has to still go on and this is coming from a woman who i celebrate restoration it gives me the ultimate joy to see relationships and marriages come back, come back from the brink of disaster and divorce and give our Heavenly Father all the praise. Because see, I know how busy the enemy is. And let me tell you something. People are punching the clock for the enemy and don't even realize what they are doing. They are actively participating in the demise of their relationships and their marriages and their families. People are actively walking away as if the as if the covenant or your commitments absolutely mean nothing. I mean, Satan and his legion of demons are having a good time watching all of this unfold. Unfold. But there are those of us, again, the covenant keepers, the commitment keepers, who understand what the enemy's assignment is. And unfortunately, your marriage is under attack. And your husband has, has proven to be the weakest link in this area of your life, in this area of your marriage. He has falling into temptation. I always say on my ministry, when I'm when I'm totally in Diva Speaks relationship ministry, my ministry, 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 I always say temptation in and of itself is not a sin. Temptation is not a sin. Giving in to that temptation is. Okay? Giving in to temptation will get you caught up. Let me address an, a, a part of your letter real quick because been there before too. You say towards the end that you're so lonely and the kind of pain that you are in. You said, I've even considered finding someone just for attention because I'm dying over here. Oh Lord, I know what that's like. Can I, can I tell you, I know what that's like. I've been there before. Got the t-shirt, won the award, took the certificate home, everything. But I want you to know something. When those thoughts come across your mind because you are lonely, because this is a setup from the enemy to drive you into the arms of another, to fill that void that your husband has created by distancing himself from you. I need you to always remember that the sin that you're looking to God to punish him for and to redirect his, his path, you're now going to put yourself in the line of fire to be disciplined and reap what you sow for breaking the same vows so please cancel the thoughts of the enemy when when those thoughts occur and say you know I, I need to just go out and get me somebody too you know because I'm lonely you are lonely you probably are the flesh is powerful 
especially when your needs are not being met. And it's a very hurtful thing to know that your husband is pleasuring or has pleasured another and leaving your needs unattended, walked away, disconnected, disregarded you, discarded you. All of that's hurtful. But baby, let me tell you, can't nobody beat God beating that husband of yours behind and making him pay for what he's done. You simply just need to remain in prayer. Take care of yourself. Don't you dare fall into the enemy's snare and do exactly the same thing that your husband is doing, which is dishonoring the covenant, which is disgracing the covenant. Now, what you want to do with your marriage is your business. If you want to stay, I applaud that. I applaud any person who wants to work it out, who wants victory over the enemy's attack on their family, who wants victory over the enemy's attack to destroy their home life and their marriages and their covenants and their commitment. I celebrate any person. that That's my, my whole ministry is about. It's about protecting your relationship, protecting your covenant and bringing it back from the brink of divorce and destruction and just taking back the power, having the victory and saying, devil, get your hands off my family. You have to see this for what it is, but I need you to take care of yourself. For those of you who are just tuning in, we have a wife that wrote in who chose to stay behind in her marriage, even though her husband has cheated twice, so she say. But we all know it's been more than twice. He's got a history of this. So not only has he cheated and she's acknowledged that he's cheated, she says she missed being loved and loved on and she's lonely. What a sad state of affairs. But I applaud this sister. I applaud this woman for being in touch with her emotions and not being ashamed to say, I stayed behind. I know this man cheated. I know this man did me wrong. But yet I'm here and I'm, I'm hoping that things turn around. The unfortunate side of sticking around when someone has broken the vows and infidelity has occurred, sometimes they get it twisted. Sometimes they think that there is no type of, you know, consequences for the bad behavior. Because if you're going to stick around no matter what I do, what's the incentive for me to stop? Think about it. So... To me, sometimes when I look at situations like this, that could be the reason that he's so cold because there's no incentive for him to stop. You've made up in your mind you were going to stay. And for that, <coughs> excuse me, alone, that's why I need you to stay connected to your higher, no, stay connected to God. I don't, I don't do that higher power stuff. I'm, I'm a Christian. Yeah, stay connected to God, baby. Keep, keep yourself prayed up. Pray that God will begin to minister to his heart. And even if God doesn't pray that God ministers to your heart and guides you, because remember, the Bible tells us that the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by God. OK, so no matter what happens, you need to make sure that you're going to be OK. But I want to strongly, strongly admonish you. Don't turn around and do the same damn thing that your husband has done to you and done to the covenant, which is go out and get you somebody to fill the void that he has intentionally created if you want out of your marriage just divorce him if you want to separate then separate but doing the tit for tat or trying to feed your flesh will never get you the results that you truly desire it will never get you the life that you truly want you will be living with regret you will be feeling guilty and it will bother your conscience because again you will have placed yourself in line to start reaping what you sow because then you will be no better than him even though he started it you participate in it and we don't want that right so i'm gonna read the letter again as i wrap this up oh you know what this is the this is just sad because we see it all the time guys we see it all the time people just are so reckless with their relationships and their marriages and the way that it almost feels guys it almost feels like when people decide that they want to step out, when you decide that it's somebody else that you want, on their way out the door, they vandalize the relationship. They vandalize your feelings. They literally trash the memories. They trash the respect. They do everything they can to tear everything down that the two of you have built and or were building. And it's like, 
Do you realize the amount of vandalism that you're doing, not only to our covenant, our relationship, but to my heart? Do you understand that you're going to have to pay for this, even though I don't have the, you know, I don't have the resources to make you pay like God going to make you pay, but you will pay. So the letter says we've been together for 10 years. He cheated on me twice. He's shown me time and time again, his words will never turn into actions. So why am I here? That is a question that you have to search yourself and you have to find out why you're there. Because if you're, oh, I'm sorry. Let me continue on with the letter. I miss companionship. I miss love. We have kids together. I'm just lonely. I wish I understand what he felt when he cheated on me both times, but I could never give him this kind of pain. I've even been considering finding someone just for attention because I'm dying over here, but I won't and I wouldn't. I'm just tired of hurting all the time. I'm so lonely. I decided to stay and work it out after his cheating but I miss being in love and being loved. You deserve to be loved. You, de be, you deserve to be loved, touched, made love to, held, hugged, someone to pay attention to you, someone to pour into you, someone to connect with you, someone who you can be vulnerable with and intimate with and really feel as if they are invested not only into the life that you share, but they're invested into the life that they're building with you. You absolutely deserve that. And I wish more of us women would talk about that. The reasons that people stay, because it's not always about being desperate. I think this letter says a lot to uh, why people stay behind is because you fear that, you know, you'll be lonely and that you're not going to find love. Meanwhile, staying behind, you're still not getting it from the person that has absolutely violated the covenant in your relationship and abandoned you. So I just pray that things get better. I pray that things will have a, a, a rapid turnaround for you and that you will have the victory. I pray that things get better. I pray that God convicts his heart. I pray that he reaps what he sow. I pray that he reaps what he sow in a mighty way with a lesson that he will never forget that what to stop him from ever doing what he has done to you again. That is my hope and my prayer for you. And just remember that you are not the first person, uh, the first woman. You are not the first couple or the only couple that has experienced turbulent times. These are critical times, hard to deal with. Relationships are struggling, especially if one of the both of you are not connected to, to God and keeping God first in your marriages, in your home. The enemy is busy. And once he knows who the weakest link is and who would be more prone to fall in for his advances, he launches an attack. And I do want to remind you that it is my, uh, my opinion that the enemy plans attack on the relationships of the marriages that have kingdom purpose. You may not know what it is, but there's purpose there. He never attacks his own. That's just my opinion. That is my opinion. I stand on that. And I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged not to um, give up on love, not to give up on the sacredness of marriage because your, your husband has lost his way. He has lost his way. And I would call him, you know, an unrepentant habitual cheater. That's what he is. He's very unrepentant. Um, he has no remorse for what he's done to your marriage. And he's left you to lick your wounds by yourself. But you know what? You will get through this. You will not always be in pain. There will come a time that you will smile again. There will come a time, well, it won't hurt like it used to. There will come a time when you will look back and you say, you know what? I'm not hurting like I used to. I'm not where I want to be. But I thank God I'm not where I was. There will come a time. You know, even seasons don't last forever. 
You'll get through this. Just keep going. And whatever you do, you know, keep praying over your marriage. Keep praying over your weak husband. He's weak. He is weak. Not in the I'm tearing him down in der derogatory type of way. I mean, he's weak, his flesh. He doesn't know how to resist temptation. He does not know how to handle himself accordingly. He does not know how to honor his vows. He simply gets aroused by someone else. He gets sexually attracted to someone else and he acts on his attraction. That's what cheating is. And you have to pray for that man. You're already there. You've made a choice to stay. So I might as well encourage you, you know, some things to do while you're there in your season of waiting, whether that is for waiting on restoration or waiting until your feelings subside and you decide that you want better for yourself and you just cannot simply exist with a title without the benefit or the relationship of that title. But pray for your husband. Pray for your marriage. Pray for your family. Understand that this is you know, um, your husband allowing the enemy to do as he pleases in your relationship. He's being, he's being very complicit with the enemy's plan. He's doing whatever he wants to do. And right now you are not his priority. Your feelings are not his priority. The covenant that you share is not his priority, but what you can do is focus on your relationship with God and understand that you're, you're, you're there. The covenant is real. It is sacred and ask God what, you know, what he would, what he would have you to do, because I can assure you that even though God hates divorce, um, he doesn't want you being mistreated and being in pain and to, to continue to keep allowing this man to keep cheating and cheating and cheating and then just doing whatever the hell he wants with no regard as to how it is impacting you, his wife and the mother of his children. But again, I, I leave you with this through all, you know, Matthew nineteen twenty six. read it you know, through Christ Jesus, all things are possible. So don't abandon hope, you know, don't abandon hope. Don't abandon your prayer life. Don't give in to the enemy's um, attempt to tempt you, you know, because you said that you wanted to, you know, get attention from someone. I get it. I get it. You know, just because someone steps outside the marriage doesn't mean that the needs of your body stop. Doesn't mean your body stops, you know, your body doesn't stop your body still craves intimacy and, you know, the fellowshipping that couples do in the bedroom. And if that has stopped as a result of his cheating, he's, he's literally put you in a vulnerable position, you know. So just be encouraged, my sister, be encouraged. No, again, it's not the end of your life. It may be the end of this era, but you never know. I think that God uses, allows transportation in our relationship and in our lives and in our homes to get our attention. Allow this trouble to be the transportation that is needed to redirect both of your courses, okay? To get the relationship and the marriage back on track. And maybe there are some things, if you look back, that, you know, should have been attended to a long time ago. Maybe there were some things that were overlooked. Maybe there were some things that were not paid attention to. But if you could have the conversation with your husband, you could definitely start to ask the questions, what made you think this was okay to do? What about our covenant felt so, um, you know, worthless that you just risk it all and just decided to lay down with another person? Not once, but twice. More than, please. He's been doing this for a while. You just know about it twice. Um, so yeah, be encouraged, my sister. And I just want all of us to just be mindful of the attack that comes against your relationships and your marriages. And I, I will stand on what I believe. I just think that there is, there is honor. Um, there's value in honoring your commitment whether you're married or not, if you've made a commitment to someone, there is value in that. I think that that speaks to what type of person you are, your character. You know, if your word means nothing, then what does that say about you? You know, once upon a time, we, we stood before an altar or we made plans to spend the rest of our life together. And if you had a change of heart at any moment, you should have talked to me versus stepping outside of the marriage or the relationship and taking it somewhere else. So 
I think that's just very distasteful. Don't forget that I do have a therapeutic card game that is available for you if your husband is willing to have the conversation for you. It is a therapeutic card game that is so intimate and private and allows the both of you to talk to one another by the questions on each of the cards. There are 86 cards in this therapeutic game that I invented. And it is designed to allow you to have that conversation. You may not agree with the answers that each of you are providing to each other, but it's definitely a conversation starter and getting you to talk to one another because how else will you figure it out together, you know? So again, my name is Angela Potarial. I have enjoyed... Um, talking to you guys and, and just, you know, pouring into this woman who is going through something, you know, Thanksgiving is this week, you know, and I can only imagine how she's already feeling lonely and disconnected and she's not feeling loved. She's not getting the attention from her husband. He's just out here doing the most. And I just hope he reaps everything he sows. I pray he get it like he's giving it, you know, you, you know, you're causing your wife all of this hell and you, you know, you Oh, I just hate it for her. So, guys, I think this is the last time that we will be together because, you know, this is a um, holiday this week for most. For those of you that celebrate it or for those of us who just have the day off. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't really myself. Yeah, I don't really celebrate Thanksgiving, um, you know, out of respect for the indigenous people. Um, but yeah, I will take that day off and, you know, do some wonderful things with my family and, you know, just kind of love on the people that love me and stuff like that. So my name is Angelo Patarial. Don't forget, if you have not had an opportunity to add the Diva Speaks Relationships Roku channel to your Roku television, if you have a Roku television, don't forget to add my channel. Okay, let me say this again. Add, please add, I extend you the invitation to add the Diva Speaks Relationships Roku channel to your Roku television. If you are new and you do not know I have an actual talk show, I will be, I start taping new episodes of my talk show um, in the month of December, but my talk show airs every second and fourth Friday of the month at the local television station here in Charlotte, North Carolina, as well as Spectrum Cable Channel 21 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. And the Diva Speaks Relationships Ministry airs on Intel Satellite TV. So if you have Satellite TV, Diva Speaks Relationships Ministry is on seven different channels. That's right, the ministry, the ministry, the ministry. That is where I basically talk, kind of like I talk tonight, but I do have the Bible out and I back my relationship opinions and my point of view with the word of God, giving you your spiritual supplement and encouragement and, you know, just encouraging you to fight for your relationships and your marriages and not be so quick to walk away. But I do understand that there are situations and um, things that come up that are deal breakers for people. And that's fine too. But you know, if it's all the same, you will love again, you will find love again. So the, the ministry is still, <laughs> it's still a good um, source to plug into. So um, yeah, don't forget to add the Diva Speaks Relationships Roku channel and my talk show also airs on the now television networks, Roku channel. Um, Intel Satellite TV, Spectrum Cable, AT&T U-verse, Access 21's Roku channel, and their live stream. And um, I can't say it enough. Don't forget to add my Roku channel, the Diva Speaks Relationships Roku channel. Um, God is good. i supposed to be um, the talk show is branching out and expanding to more networks, more Roku channels and being shopped out so to god be the glory this is a wonderful thing to be able to um talk to people about real relationship issues and not participate in the gender wars i that is not what i do i want to be i want to be part of the solution i want to be part of the source of encouragement uh, i want to be the reason that people stop and think you know what i was going to do this but you know what let me stop and pump the brakes and go and look again. Okay. You remember the story in the Bible? Was it Elijah when God told him to go, go look again. Okay. Go look again. But yeah. So 
Um, my next uh, ministry, for those of you who are interested, it will air this Thursday. This Thursday at 5 a.m. on Intel Satellite TV. The topic that's going to air, I believe it is, oh, rushing the process and ruining the results. Again, this Thursday, Diva Speaks Relationships and Ministry, the topic that um, will air is rushing the process and ruining the results. That is definitely um, focused on those of you who are healing, who have decided to stay, stay and fight for your marriages and your relationship and you just want to get to where you need to be. You want to get back to wholeness. You want to get back to a season of being happy and, and just free from all of the attacks of the enemy, but understanding that there is a process. And if you rush that process, you're going to ruin everything. So make sure you check that episode out this Thursday. Again, um, rushing, rushing, the pro rushing, the process and ruining the results. And if you don't want to wait till Thursday, you can always look in my video on demand section in on the Diva Speaks Relationships Roku channel. I have it in my fan favorites, I believe. Um, you can still find that particular episode I have on a blue and white church hat. <laughs> You'll know you got the right episode if you see me in, in blue and white. So just be encouraged and know that you are not alone. It is nothing that you have to be embarrassed about. If you stand on the side of righteousness, attacks will happen and they will be frequent and they will be something that is a part of your journey. And if you know anything about your journey with Christ, no slave is greater than his master. And if we are servants in the kingdom of God, understanding that we're no better than Christ. If Christ went through trials and tribulation, hell, we're going to go through them too. So you just got to stand, you know, stand strong, be encouraged and know that, you know what? It must be good here. It's got to be some good stuff here because the enemy sure has his attention on my home, on my marriage or my relationship. So that's it for tonight. You guys, have a wonderful rest of your week and enjoy your holiday. Toodles.